Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Learn to Teach. In my previous video, I have covered the topic of photosynthesis in plants. Now today, I'm going to discuss about the site for photosynthesis. That is nothing but the leaf, its structure and design to carry out the process of photosynthesis. So now, let us begin. So when we look at the structure of a leaf, it looks so simple, isn't it? Leaf consists of a broad, flat and thin lamina, also called leaf blade, which is attached to the stem by a petiole. But when we look at the cross section of the leaf, we will understand its complexity. So while looking at the cross section of a leaf, you will understand that a leaf structure is actually made up of certain layers of cells. Okay, so we'll learn about each one by one in a bit detail. So let us begin with the first one that is the uppermost layer, nothing but the cuticle. Cuticle, it is a waxy layer or else coating that prevents water loss by evaporation. Cuticle is thin, it is transparent and why is it so? Just to allow the maximum sunlight to penetrate inside the leaf. Next to the layer of cuticle is the layer of upper epidermis. So the cells over here are flat, irregular, very thin and transparent to allow the entry of the sunlight. Next we have the layer that is known as palisade mesophyll. Here the cells are rod shaped that contain specialized organelles called chloroplast. And chloroplast contain the pigment chlorophyll, which gives the green color to the leaf. So we can say that each cell of the palisade mesophyll contains a number of chloroplast and the chlorophyll pigment found inside these chloroplast. They absorb the sunlight, which provides the necessary energy for the process of photosynthesis. The next layer present just below the palisade mesophyll has loosely arranged cells with large air spaces. And these are nothing but the spongy mesophyll. As you can see in the diagram over here, spongy mesophyll cells are smaller than those of the palisade mesophyll. And the large air spaces which are present between them, it is just present to allow the easy diffusion of carbon dioxide and oxygen. So the air spaces is giving these cells a large surface area to maximize the diffusion of carbon dioxide into the cells and oxygen out of the cells. Also, there is a continuous supply of water and minerals in every leaf cell through the extensive network of veins within the leaf lamina. Plant veins consist of xylem and phloem. Xylem cells do what? Xylem cells, they transport water and minerals absorbed by the roots from the soil in the upward direction towards the leaves. So here the water, it is used in preparing glucose during photosynthesis or else water is lost as water vapor in the process of transpiration. Whereas phloem, it provides a passage for the downward and upward movement of food, that is the glucose, manufactured in the leaves to various other parts of the plant. Hence the food, it acts as an instant energy source for the plant or else it is stored in the form of starch. Next, as you can see in the diagram over here, just below the layer of palisade mesophyll and spongy mesophyll lies the lower epidermis. So just like the upper epidermis layer, the lower epidermis is also a protective layer of cells which contain certain pores that are called stomata. Stomata allows the movement of carbon dioxide and oxygen in and out of the plant. So the small openings which are present on the lower surface of leaves, these openings are called stomata and each stoma, it is surrounded by two bean-shaped cells known as the guard cells, 
which regulate the opening and closing of the stomata. Okay, so these guard cells, they contain chloroplast and uh, the guard cells are made up of two walls. The outer wall, it is thin, whereas the inner wall is thick. Okay, so during the daytime in the presence of sunlight, water moves into the guard cells, making them to swell up. So as they swell up, their outer thin wall, it bulges outward as a result of which the inner wall moves apart from each other. This results in the opening of the stomata. And during the night time, the water moves out of the guard cells, which makes them flaccid. This causes the inner walls to come together as a result of which stomata closes. Hence, you can see that the leaf structure is designed in such a manner to carry out the process of photosynthesis in the best possible way. So now, let us quickly have a recap of the entire process of photosynthesis, which gets completed in a series of steps. So as the leaves have a broad, flat and white surface to absorb the maximum sunlight, they bear tiny pores, which are known as the stomata to ease the exchange of gases between the leaf and the atmosphere. As the carbon dioxide enters into the palisade mesophyll through the stomata, it spreads to each and every cell because of the presence of large intercellular spaces among the leaf cells. And since the palisade mesophyll, it contains countless chloroplast, it keeps on absorbing more and more sunlight because of the presence of the chlorophyll pigment inside it. With this, the plants have an extensive network of veins that is the xylem and phloem within the leaf lamina. Xylem is involved in the transportation of water and minerals into the leaf cells, whereas phloem is concerned with the translocation of prepared food to the other parts of the plant. At the end of photosynthesis, oxygen which is produced along with the glucose that is released into the atmosphere through the stomata. So with this, I would like to end my today's video. Hope that you all have understood the concept very well. Please don't forget to share your views about the video. Subscribe to my channel, Learn to Teach. Hit the bell icon to get notified for the further videos. Till then, keep learning, keep teaching and keep enjoying.